So before I get started, let's just go through and say hello to everybody. June, hello. You ordered your grass plugs. That's great. Uh, Karen, hello. Um, what zone for Cape Charles? Um, I, that I'm not 100% sure. I would guess probably in the seven, maybe six. Uh, you can always check on, uh, uh, if you just type in on your Google search, uh, USDA hardy zones, um, then that will tell you your uh, hardiness zone for your area. It's a simple map. It's real easy to kind of see. And I'll talk about zones for each of these plants. Uh, but I would think you're probably in that zone six to seven would be my guess. Um, do you have crepe myrtles, Linda? Yes, we do have a few. We have a small selection. As we get warmer, we'll get more and more. Um, so zoysia, June, we are going to be talking about zoysia and St. Augustine specifically. Um, and then Mr. Shepard is watching. Hello, good to see you. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So today I'm going to be talking about picking your perfect perennial. So it's a great time to uh, come into the garden center and see all of these wonderful perennials. Perennials are one of my favorites because they come back every year. And that's what's so much fun. In fact, some of them are even on the borderline evergreen uh, side, which means that they're always there. And so these are some of my favorites. We've got some sunny perennials that bloom great in the sun. We've got some shade perennials. I'm gonna be talking about all of them specifically um, and kind of go through some of them and the characteristics and how you might grow them and how you might use them in your landscape. And I'll throw in the zones and if they're deer or rabbit resistant, I'll try and include all that information because I know a lot of us might live in deer country um, or have rabbit issues. Um, however, these are some of the tried and true perennials for the Hampton Roads area. They are very, very well adapted to our area. Uh, a lot of them are grown locally, um, so they know this area very well, um, and they're great plants. Uh, some might, might even attract those early pollinators. So if you're looking uh, to help out some of our local pollinators early in the season, because when it warms up, like on Tuesday, it's going to get kind of warm, you're going to start to see some of those, those birds and bees and, and, uh, and the different uh, pollinators flying around and looking for some pollen. And so we've got a great collection and we're gonna kind of go through all of them. But perennials are one of my favorites because they get bigger and better as they go along. So once they're established, they're very easy to grow. Almost all of these are adapted to our soil type as well. So whether you've got clay or sandy soil, we can always help you with that. Um, and what we always recommend whenever you plant a perennial or a shrub or any plant really in the ground is we're gonna use uh, compost, perlite, and your soil mixture. And so whenever you're, you're shopping around our garden center and you've got your plants and you're ready to check out, you can always add in a little bit of compost and a little bit of perlite. It's a great thing to amend your soil with. And that's what we're always gonna recommend. Compost is gonna hold a little bit of water in, but also break apart the soil and add nutrients. And perlite are those little white styrofoamy things you see in, uh, in uh, potting soils. And those are gonna help break apart your soil and keep it airy and keep the airflow going and your water percolation through the soil. So whenever you're planting a perennial for the longevity of, your, of the life of the perennial, uh, invest a little bit in your soil. I think it's a great thing. And then I'll also talk about, as we kind of go through, I'll pop in some other different ideas like our biotone starter fertilizer, our green leaf fertilizer. I'll talk about those as we go along. But I kind of want to get into this. I'm going to be doing a lot of kind of show and tell and showing you all these different plants um, and how they grow and how to use them. And so I'm excited to kind of get rolling into that. Um, so let's see. Let's start with one of my favorites, and I'm gonna kind of move some stuff around here as we go along uh, so that I can kind of show them a little bit better and so this display will kind of fall apart a little bit as we go along. Um, so one of the first ones that I wanna talk about is Candy Tuft. So Candy Tuft is a great perennial. Uh, it's borderline evergreen, so what I, I usually call kind of semi-evergreen, meaning it's almost always there. Now in extremely cold winters, uh, you could see that the foliage kind of falls apart, gets a little burnt up in the winter time frame, but in the early part of spring, it starts to freshen back up. It's kind of like the daffodils, the tulips, you know, it's kind of the sign of spring is when your candy tuft starts to grow and starts to bloom. And candy tuft comes in this gorgeous white color. Um, there are a couple different varieties, but typically white is what you're going to see. They're great for rock gardens. They're great for borders, mass plantings. I love planting these in odd numbers, threes and fives, and they get a good spread on them as well. So these only get about, you know, six to eight inches tall, but can spread as much as 12 to, to 18 inches. So you can space these things out about 12 to 18 inches apart, and they'll just form a nice big mass of snow white blooms, and they're just absolutely gorgeous. They look great trailing over rocks. 
You can grow these in containers as well. It's a great container plant. But uh, um, Candy Tough is one of my favorites. So Candy Tough is zone three to nine. It is deer and rabbit resistant. Um, and all of our Candy Tough right now is 30% off. So check out that. That is just absolutely gorgeous. I love white in the landscape. It pops. Um, this is a full sun plant. So I'm going to go through all my sun plants here. Full sun to maybe a little bit of part shade. And so let's talk about that real quick just to kind of get that out of the way. What is the difference between full sun um, and part sun and full shade? So uh, that's kind of how I kind of always uh, relate the sun is, is full sun means it's getting six hours or more a day. And that's typically gonna be on you know, the south side of a house, the west side of, a house is, of your house is gonna get the most amount of sun. Um, but also you got trees, so you got to kind of watch and see, you know, what kind of sun you're going to get throughout the uh, day. I mean, I've got a south facing house, it face, or sorry, west facing, uh, but I've got big trees in the front yard. So I've got a pretty good sized shade garden in my front yard, even though it's west facing. But the south side of my house gets almost all day sun. So kind of look at your directions on your, on your phone. You can use your compass app on your phone and figure out which way your house is facing and you can kind of plan your gardens around that. But also look at your, your trees, your neighbor's trees, and look for your shade patterns. Full sun is over six hours. Part shade or part sun are kind of in that four to six hour time frame. And then anything less than four hours would be considered shade. And so shade gardening is one of my favorite things to do. I absolutely love shade gardening. There's some great plants. I'm going to show you all of these, but full sun is a great place to get lots of bloom and lots of color and lots of impact. And so candy tough is one of my favorites. We'll start with that. And that's 30% off right now uh, through March 14th. So it's a great time to come in and get your candy tough. They look great in borders. One of my favorite perennials, very easy to grow, very low maintenance. So the next one would be phlox. So phlox are awesome. Another kind of smaller plant, uh, you know, doesn't get real tall. So only about, you know, somewhere in that six to eight inch range as well, but can spread up to 24 to 36 inches. So each year the clump gets bigger and bigger. And there's so many different colors of these as well. So with candy tough, it's usually just white. But with phlox, there's lots and lots of different ones. This one's called spring purple. So it's kind of a pinky purple. It's really, 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 really pretty. These are very drought tolerant, disease resistant. They don't have a lot of issues. They're deer and rabbit resistant. So flocks are zones three to 10. Great for rock gardens because they have that kind of trailing habit, but also amazing in mass plantings. So you can plant these as borders. You can plant them in groupings. Um, it's a really, really pretty plant. This one is the spring purple. Oh, and flocks. All of our creeping flocks are 30% off right now. So we've got that color. We've got this really pretty kind of lavender color. If you can quite say that. It probably looks a little white to you, but it's really a pretty lavender. It actually, um, as it ages, kind of gets a little bit darker purple. Really pretty. This one is called uh, Emerald Cushion Blue. So kind of that bluish lavender color. 30% off all of our creeping flocks. This is a great one, really pretty color. And then here's another one. And this one is called, uh, sorry, this one, this is a purple as well. So this is kind of a darker purple, really, really pretty color. So these are just great plants. Creeping phlox are amazing. They bloom in the spring, early spring time frame, um, and the clump gets bigger and bigger each year and they kind of really, really spread out. Now, a lot of people get confused with creeping phlox with tall phlox. So this is the tall phlox. So let's pull these up so you can kind of see the comparison. So obviously creeping phlox are gonna creep and be a little bit lower growing, kind of similar to like your verbenas um, and, and those types of ground cover types of plants. So it works great as ground cover as well. But this is a tall phlox. And so as you can see, tall phlox gets a little bit taller. Um, and this is an early one. So this one is actually called uh, Fashionably Early Princess. So it's a really cool phlox. Most of your tall phlox are gonna bloom closer to the summer time frame. So typically in that, you know, maybe late April, but really more like May and June is when your tall phlox are gonna come out. And these are great for pollinators. Remember I was mentioning pollinators earlier, so your bees and your butterflies. If you've got some early bee action out there, this is a great one to have. Uh, the bees are always flocking to it and tall phlox are a great choice for the perennial garden, whether you're making a butterfly garden or whether you are uh, just planting for color. Tall phlox, but creeping phlox are another sign of spring. Again, I kind of always think of tulips and daffodils, candy tuff and phlox. Really, really great. So all of our creeping phlox are 30% off. So let me just check and see if there's any questions. 
How long does phlox bloom? So most of your candy tuff and your phlox are gonna bloom somewhere around the month, maybe month and a half, so maybe four to six weeks typically. But the thing that I love about candy tuff and phlox is the green foliage kind of keeps on growing. So it's gonna grow, so you got kind of this great green ground cover as well. And the perennials, you know, a lot of perennials will continue to bloom throughout the entire season, but a lot of them also bloom in just a certain time frame. And so kind of knowing when the things are gonna bloom does help you kind of prepare and plan how you might want to plant everything. Uh, also, the way that I always kind of remember uh, is I check out my garden center. So I, of course, work at a garden center, but go to the garden center and just check it out throughout the year. You know, go every month and you'll see different plants and you'll see different times that they bloom. Typically, we're gonna carry a majority of the plants when they're blooming. So creeping flocks, if you ever wanted any, now is the time to get it from here all the way till probably mid-April. And then the blooms are gonna kind of fizzle out for us and in the garden. And so then you're gonna to want to look for different plants to plant alongside of it. So it's a great thing to kind of come in and check us out throughout the year because I really think that helps kind of prepare and plan how you wanna do your flower garden. Okay, so Claudia said need uh, suggestions for shady ideas. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that for sure. So we've got some shady plants that I absolutely love. All right, so the next one I wanna show you is Dianthus. Now Dianthus is another one of the tried and true perennials in this area. It does really well and there's a huge range of colors. Uh, and we've got some really, really cool ones. And Dianthus, so let's go through some of the basics here, are zones three to nine. They are pretty deer and rabbit resistant. Uh, sometimes you might see if the deer are hungry enough, they might pick off some of the flowers. But here in the Virginia Beach area, we don't have a lot of deer problems. Uh, but Dianthus is really, really pretty. There's lots and lots of different colors out there. Um, and they are 30% off right now. So a lot of us might know it as Sweet William. So you can see this red one right here next to me, this dark kind of crimson red. A lot of people call that Sweet William. Slightly different leaf structure. I'll pull this one out here in a second and show you. But this is Dianthus. This is your common uh, kind of looking Dianthus. It's kind of actually got like a bluish colored foliage. This one is called Rosebud. It's got this really pretty rose kind of pink red color. Really, really nice. Dianthus is great. It's also kind of semi evergreen. So if we don't have a too cold of a winter, this foliage will kind of stay in this nice clumpy form. Looks like grass. Uh, they do range in sizes. So this one gets about eight to 12 inches tall and wide. Um, so not real tall plant, great again for borders, mass plantings, um, rock gardens, they work really, really well. The clump gets bigger and bigger each year, but some can get a little bit taller. So I'll pull out this one. This reminds me of fire, which was, was the perennial of the year for a few years there. Uh, but this one's actually called uh, bumbleberry pie. But look how tall that one is. So this Dianthus really kind of shows off that grassy habit. Uh, really, really pretty pink. It's almost kind of a semi-double bloom. Really nice big bloom. And here's a great example of how I can show you how easy these plants are to take care of. Now you don't have to do it, but I do recommend it keeps it kind of clean if we do this. Um, but what you can do is let this thing bloom completely. And as you'll kind of see all those dead heads kind of sit there, then you know it's a good time to go and prune it. Once you don't see any more buds coming on it, you can go through and do a prune. And it's really, really easy, especially on these taller varieties, because all I have to do is just kind of grab the top of this and then just cut it off. So I can just cut it right in this area and then a whole new bloom set will come out. So it's a really, really pretty uh, perennial. It's very easy, very disease and insect resistant. It doesn't have a lot of issues, drought tolerant, deer resistant, 30% off. Dianthus is absolutely gorgeous. This is called bumbleberry pie. Let's see, I've got a couple other varieties here I wanna show you. This one is called early bird chili pinks. So really pretty, kind of a darker red, so you can kind of see this rose color here, that lighter color, and this is a really dark red. A little bit tighter of a clump of grass here, kind of that grassy look, really pretty. Actually, when the blooms start to first emerge, there's a little bit of white, so you can kind of see that white emerging, and then it turns to that dark, dark crimson red. Really, really pretty, uh, deep, deep red, uh, double bloom, kind of a formal bloom. This one is really, really pretty. This one's called Odessa. So Odessa Amy, which is really pretty. It's got that gorgeous pink double bloom. Really nice, almost has lavender tones to it. Great, these actually work great in containers as well. So if you need kind of a splash of color and these Dianthus will bloom from spring until frost. So, you know, every once in a while, like I said, you need to deadhead them, go in and kind of pick out those deadhead blooms or just give it a little shear off the top like you're mowing your grass. 
real easy. Just go in and prune off those deadheads and that'll help encourage it to bloom and keep going. Um, with Dianthus, um, anything that blooms really from spring until frost, which is going to give you, you know, all spring, summer, into fall season blooms, like Dianthus is a great one, um, do need to be fed fairly often. So it's a great time for me to kind of throw that out there, um, which is our green leaf plant foods. So these are specifically designed plant foods for our area. These are $5 off right now. So normally $14.99, we've got an organic formulation and we've got a traditional formulation. These are great ways to feed our plants in our area. They're great on shrubs, trees, annuals, perennials, even indoor plants. This is kind of my go-to fertilizer. So if I'm ever looking to feed a plant, I choose one of these guys. I always have it on my shelf in my garage. They are great, specifically designed for Hampton Roads. What's really cool about these plant foods is they have micronutrients. So a lot of your fertilizers out there are gonna have those macronutrients, your nitrogen, your phosphorus, your potassium. And those are important, they're the big ones. You need, the plants definitely have to have those. But what's really cool about these are these trace elements. So it's got boron and copper and zinc and molybdenum um, and iron and all of these different things that plants also need. And so you don't get those with some of those big time fertilizers. But with ours, McDonald Green Lace, specifically formulated for Hampton Roads, it's a great plant food to get your hands on and to use throughout the season. So we'll put those off to the side. So green leaf plant food, great way to feed our dianthus and keep them blooming. Look at this one, this one is gorgeous. This is called Odessa Bling Bling. Really pretty, I don't know if you can quite see it, but it's like an apricot color. It's kind of this orange to yellow. It's got a little bit of pink tones in there as well. It is an absolutely stunning dianthus. A little bit more on the green side on the foliage, so you can kind of probably see the difference in foliage colors there. So a little bit more green. This one's a little bit more on the bluish color. Really pretty. Dianthus, there's a huge, huge collection of Dianthus out there. And there's one that's gonna fit your needs most likely, uh, whether you're looking for a certain color or you're looking for a certain height. Dianthus covers a wide range of all of those different ones. And this one right here, let me see if I can pull this guy out. I'm gonna kind of mess up my pot here. I kind of just cram these in there just to kind of show that. This is what a lot of us probably know as Sweet William, and it kind of looks a little bit more on the side of an annual dianthus. So annual dianthus, there's some out there that aren't quite hardy in our area, um, but we'll tell you. So if you're curious and you're looking around and you see some dianthus, ask us. That's what we're known for is having the answers to all of your gardening questions. Uh, we've been in Hampton Roads for 75 years, so definitely come in and ask us questions. Uh, but this one looks more on the annual dianthus side, but it's actually a perennial. Sweet William is another name that people use for dianthus. Um, and so this one's called Rockin' Red. Really pretty red, a little bit taller as you can see, so in that 12 to 18 inch height. Um, and then each year the clump gets bigger and bigger. These can get up to you know 24 inches wide. So really, really pretty perennial, very easy. And again, I love the fact that when I go to deadhead this guy, all I gotta do is just kind of give it a haircut, just kind of chop off the top and let it regrow. It's a great way to kind of keep these guys blooming. Every time I cut it, I'll give it a little bit of plant food and that'll keep it blooming all throughout the spring season. So Dianthus is one of my favorites, one of my, one of my tops on my list. Uh, let's see. Is Phlox sun or shade? Phlox are sun. So everything that I'm talking about now, right now is sun. Um, Dianthus, Linda said are fabulous in this area. Lori, hello from Outer Banks. Great to have you. A lot of these plants are gonna work very, very well down in North Carolina, Eastern Shore, uh, across Hampton Roads. These are designed for this area and great uh, uh, zone capabilities of being able to grow in all those different zones. All right, so the next one I wanna talk about is might not be as known. Um, it, it's, you don't see it as much, but it is a hardcore perennial. So this one's really, really good. This is called Bachelor's Button. So also known as, uh, let's see, I think there's another name, the Centauria uh, or Cornflower. Some people might call it Cornflower, but Bachelor's Button is a really, really pretty plant. These are zones three to nine. Um, they get about, uh, let's say, probably two feet tall, so about that 24 inch range, maybe slightly taller, maybe 27 inches, so a little bit bigger, and they can spread pretty well too. So these can really naturalize an area pretty nicely. Very, very easy to grow, and I love this little fringy purple flower. Really different. They call it Bachelor's Button, Centauria, 
or um, uh, so this is a really, really easy perennial to grow. It's a very, very durable plant. Um, it's got this big silvery kind of furry leaf on it. Really awesome. Full sun, loves full sun, and I love the blooms on them. Every once in a while, you'll find a deadhead just go in. So like this one's kind of fizzling here. Just go in, pick it off. Super, super easy. Keeps it blooming. Give it some plant food every once in a while, and this guy will keep on performing for you. It's a really, really good plant. It is uh, deer and rabbit resistant as well, um, and it's a really, really easy full sun perennial, and just that different color and that different texture. I love adding textures in the landscape. So because this is a slightly bigger perennial, you could just grow one of them, um, but you can also grow multiples in mass plantings. If you've got a big area to kind of cover up and you want a really strong perennial, this is a great one for you. The corn flower or uh, bachelor's button. Really, really nice one. I'll also throw this one in here while I got it sitting here. This is society garlic. So you probably, if you got around this plant, you're definitely going to be able to smell it. It's got a, a fragrance to it, but it smells like garlic. And so if you like the smell of garlic, this is a great one. Um, but it also is super, super deer and rabbit resistant. They don't mess with them. It's a very, very hardcore plant. Kind of reminds me of agapanthus. Um, really, you know, really pretty foliage, nice green foliage, has that grassy clump. And then it gets all these little star flowers up on the top. So I don't even quite see those. But these little lilac-y star flowers. Actually, some people will say that these will detract moles from your area. So growing these in clumps um, around a vegetable garden will help keep the deer out and the other pests and animal out because it's got a fragrance to it for sure. Um, but it's a really pretty perennial by itself. It's kind of naturalizing. The clump gets bigger and bigger each year. So it's a really, really pretty easy to grow uh, perennial. And you can use the leaves as like a chive. So you can cut it up. It's actually edible. But society garlic is a hardcore perennial. It really, really does very, very well. Uh, so society garlic is zones seven to 10. So a little bit smaller of a frame of, of being able to grow it. So you can grow it definitely on the Eastern shore, on the peninsula, um, but it doesn't grow quite as far north or as far uh, west in the Virginia area. Um, so you wanna be a little bit more careful if you start to get a little bit colder, but really society garlic's pretty, pretty durable plant. Uh, and so if you like the fragrance of, of garlic, if you don't, you can plant this further away. It really does help kind of keep moles and voles out of an area, helps keep deer and rabbit away. Uh, it's a really pretty plant. You can plant it in clumps or masses or borders around a vegetable garden. It's a really pretty one and it's edible, which is fun. Um, so I wanted to kind of show off society garlic. It's another cool one that you don't see a lot or hear a lot about. Uh, so something a little bit different and unusual. All right. So let's go on to Scabiosa. I always like that name, Scabiosa. It's a, it's a fun name to say. <laughs> uh, or pincushion flower, but it's one of my favorite spring blooming uh, perennials. Now this actually can bloom all the way till frost. It tends to take a little bit of a break in the summer time frame uh, when it gets really, really hot and humid in the area, but it's got this great foliage, kind of silvery green foliage, uh, really, really kind of dissected uh, leaf. So it's got a lot of in and out lobes, uh, really, really pretty leaf, easy again to deadhead because all the flowers kind of pop up above it. So you can just give it a good prune, a little shear back every once in a while when you don't have a lot of blooms or, or um, buds coming. It's really easy to kind of just cut those off. You can go in and pick them out individually, but this one's a great one. Pollinators, uh, early season pollinators love this guy, the pin cushion flower. They can land on top, take a little rest, but also get some pollen while they're sitting there resting. So scabiosa or pin cushion flower, this is a really, really good one. This is zones four to nine. This variety is called butterfly blue. So it's got that really pretty kind of blue lavender color, which is hard to come by in the landscape sometimes. You don't see a lot of that kind of lavendery bluish color. Blue is actually known to be very almost, almost non-existent in the flower world, um, but this one gets pretty close, butterfly blue. Really, really pretty. De uh, deer and rabbit resistance. Sometimes they'll go through and pick off some of the blooms um, if they're hungry enough. Depends on how many deer or rabbits you have. Uh, but really, other than that, it's a pretty tough plant. Um, it does need a little bit of watering uh, through those hotter periods of, of, of the year. Um, so planting and definitely mulching around it will help. But these are great in masses. Again, another great border plant, smaller perennial. This one gets about, uh, let's see, about 18 inches tall. 
um, and about probably 24 inches wide as it matures. Uh, so the clump just again gets bigger and bigger. That's why perennials are awesome, is they keep getting bigger and bigger throughout the year. All right, let's see what else do I have around here. Um, I've got Purple Heart, one of my favorites. So it's a little chilly for this one right now, but we got some in. We're going to be putting uh, it out pretty soon as we get through a little bit of these cooler temperatures. But Purple Heart is a really, really awesome, phenomenal perennial. Um, it can actually get eaten by some deer and rabbits. I've actually got some in my yard, and I've got a couple deer that come by and graze on it every once in a while. But other than that, it's a super, super tough perennial. Very easy, very drought tolerant. It's got kind of that succulent feel to it. And these guys can spread. Very easy to root too. So if you've got a clump of it and you want to move some of it to another part of the yard, you can just cut off a little piece, stick it in the ground, and it usually roots pretty easily. You don't even have to think about it. The Latin name is kind of another weird one, kind of like Scabiosa. This one's called Secretia, <laughs> which is kind of a funny name. I, I remember learning that back uh, probably about 10 or 15 years ago, and I always thought that was a weird kind of sounding name. Uh, but Purple Heart, it's a great perennial. A lot of people think uh, it's similar to that Wandering Jew, uh, Wandering You plant, um, but it gets these little hot pink flowers, or little pale pink, I guess I should say, up against this dark purple foliage. And purple foliage is great, especially when you're pairing it with a contrasting color like this Dianthus with this Purple Heart, really, really pretty. Great in containers. You can grow this in hanging baskets. Uh, you can grow it in containers as a trailer, so it'll kind of be your, your spiller out of your container, but it's awesome in the landscape as well. It can take up a good amount of your, your, your area, which is good if you're trying to cover some space. Awesome in mass plantings. Really easy to prune. I mean, you can go and just snap off a branch if you want to. Uh, you can go and prune it if you need to, to kind of keep it in check. But these are really, really awesome. They get about, I'd say 16 to 18 inches tall and about 24 to 36 inches wide. So two to three feet wide uh, in one season. Each year they pop out of the ground. Now these will die back. So these go completely dormant in the winter and then come back every spring. They're pretty hardy. So let's see, Purple Heart is zones seven to 10. So pretty much all the way through the Hampton Roads area, Eastern Shore, Virginia Beach, and of course down to Nags Head and, and the North Carolina area. So this is a great one. Purple Heart, one of my favorites. I'm gonna put this down on the ground, give me a little space here to kind of keep showing you some other ones. Uh, let's talk about these Gerber daisies. These are absolutely stunning Gerber daisies. I gotta show you. So Gerber daisies were always kind of an annual, um, but now there is a perennial Gerber daisy. And these are absolutely amazing flowers. Look at that. They almost don't look real, do they? So this one's orange. This one is called Sweet Sunset, but it's a perennial Gerber daisy. These get about, let's see, I think they're about you know, 18 inches. Yeah, 18 inches tall and wide. So a little bit smaller plant. These are great, again, for containers. If you wanted a perennial container garden, something that you can grow in a container, it's gonna go dormant in the winter, but it'll come back every year. Um, and they're really, really easy to grow. Um, you do want to deadhead them every once in a while. So if a flower starts to fade on you or start to kind of get a little, uh, all the petals fall off, just go in, follow the stem down to the base and pick it off. They make great little cut flowers as well. Uh, so a really, really pretty one. This one's called Sweet Sunset. Got this really pretty red one. This one's called Sweet Love. So I know it kind of might look a little orangey to you, but it's a really, really pretty deep red, really. It's a really pretty plant. We've got this awesome pink one here. So this one's pink and it almost, um, as it starts to fade, it gets a little bit, as the flowers get a little bit older or even younger flowers, come out a little bit in the paler pink so you can get kind of that multicolored look. This one's got a good example of something. So this flower is getting a little old. It's getting lost a couple flowers, uh, a couple petals around the edge. So I'm gonna go in and show you how to deadhead this. This is real simple. You can use your fingers, you can use a pair of pruners, but you just follow this stem all the way down as far as you can go, and then just pinch it right off. So that's a great way of cleaning these every once in a while, they're super, super easy. And so having a Gerber daisy that you can grow as a perennial is awesome. And then last but not least is this yellow one. Look at this, absolutely stunning, bright yellow color, really, really pretty, kind of looks like a sunflower almost. You might even compare it to a bush daisy. So bush daisies are an annual in this area. Uh, they're all 30% off right now, but Gerber daisies, the perennial Gerber daisy looks very, very similar. Gets just tons and tons of blooms. And these bloom from spring until frost. So they'll just keep on going. 
Give them a little bit of food every once in a while. I'd say about every month to two months. They're pretty heavy feeders because they're producing lots of blooms, but this one will keep on blooming for you and it comes back because it's a perennial. So no longer do you have to plant those annual uh, Gerber daisies, you can plant a perennial one. And this will come back year after year in your garden, in a container, lots and lots of different uses. Full sun, awesome, awesome plant. All right, let's see if we got any questions going on here. How long does bachelor's button bloom? So this will actually bloom spring until frost, so it keeps on going. Do a little bit of deadheading and that'll keep it going. So Mary said, mixing leaf size texture is so important for the interest when not in bloom. Uh, thank you for this guy is great. That's a very nice comment. Um, awesome. So let's see, how long do Gerber's bloom? So I, I answered that there at the end. Gerber's, these Gerber daisies will bloom all the way from now, from spring until frost. So you get spring, summer, and fall blooms out of them. They are absolutely awesome. They'll go dormant and they come back each year and do it again and again. But just make sure you're getting the perennial Gerber rather than the annual Gerber if you're looking for the one that comes back every year. All right, let's keep going. Let's see what else I got for full sun here. I got a couple other random ones. I want to show you this Junkus. So this is called Blue Dart. And this is a Junkus. And Junkus, I love grass. And so, again, we were talking about textures. This is a different texture. Super, super hardcore plant. If you've got a lot of wet areas, this is a full sun grass. It's semi evergreen. So in extremely cold winters, you might see it get a little damaged, but it won't hurt the plant. It'll come right back every year. You can prune it off, you know, pretty close to the ground, about an inch or two from the ground, and it'll shoot out new blades um, in the springtime. But typically you can just let it go. It actually can take very, very wet conditions. So you see a lot of these in ponds but also great in just a low-lying area. Uh, maybe you're making a rain garden. Uh, this is a really, really great perennial, very, very hardcore plant. You can kind of feel it. You know, when you feel a plant, it's like that thing is stiff, it's rigid. I love that stiff, upright texture. I use this a lot in containers uh, because it just gives you that kind of height and that kind of look and that kind of uh, that, that thriller. You know, we always talk about spillers, thrillers, and fillers. This is a great one for containers. It's almost got a bluish color to it. Um, they call it blue dart, uh, but it's a really, really pretty blue-green color. Really, really fun just to rub your hands through. And a lot of grasses out there, like perennial grasses like pampas grass or miscanthus, um, have that kind of sharp razor kind of feel in them. You don't want to put your hands on them too much. This guy's nice and smooth, not going to hurt a fly. Really, really fun, gives you a little bit of movement in the wind. Um, and great for whether you're doing like a coastal look, just a perennial look, or in containers. This one has a lot of versatility. Um, get these, gets these little tiny plumes out of it. Not really known for its plumes, but Junkus is a hardcore plant. It's actually fairly drought tolerant too. Um, deer and rabbit resistant for sure. Let's see, did I write down the zones? Yep, yeah, zone four to nine. So it's got a pretty good um, uh, range of zones. So you can grow this a lot of different places. Uh, pretty cold tolerant, uh, but Junkus is awesome. And this one's called Blue Dart. Uh, and we carry lots of different types of Junkus throughout the year. The Twisted Arrows Junkus, I'm sure a lot of you have seen that. It's got a twisty kind of pattern to it. But this one, I just love that rigid, upright habit. Really cool texture, really cool look. So Junkus Blue Dart. Let's see, what else we got here? Uh, oh, another one of my favorites for full sun is Euphorbia. This one is called, I think, uh, Ascot Rainbow. So yep, Ascot Rainbow. This is Euphorbia. Now, Euphorbia is um, a very drought tolerant. This is a hardcore perennial. I actually love the blooms. I didn't grab the one with the blooms because I love the fact that it's got this kind of maroon color that you can see. But when it blooms, it gets a kind of a similar looking bloom to the plant. Um, so it's almost hidden, but it's really, really different looking. It's got kind of like an eye in it. Uh, but these are great in rock gardens. They're very drought tolerant. They're very easy to grow. Um, very, very sun tolerant. So if you've got a hot, dry area, this might be a great option for you. Um, it's a really, really pretty plant. Pretty much evergreen too. So again, if we got some extreme cold temperatures, you might see some burning on the leaves, but it won't hurt it at all, won't phase it at all. Comes back every year, bigger and better and just amazing. And I think these get about 24 inches, yeah, 20 inches high. So about 20 inches high and about the same width. Um, so about a two by two perennial, almost looks like a shrub with that great variegation. Look at that, I just love that color in there. These are also awesome in containers. Uh, you can pair this with lots of different plants. 
uh, because you get that different multiple of colors. You get some yellow, some of that blue green, a little bit of maroon, a little bit of pink in there. So you can pair it with lots and lots of different plants. One of my favorite perennials, Euphorbia, Ascot Rainbow. Really, really cool one. Let's see, I don't know if I said the zones on that one. This is zones six to nine. So a pretty good range there in zones as well. All right, I think I'm getting down to the end of my sun perennials. So let me take this opportunity to tell you about some other great perennial deals that we got going on, which is herbs. So I'm not gonna do a whole segment on herbs today, but I do wanna tell you we've got a great collection of herbs right now. So we've got a lot of different ones, some that we consider perennials, some you gotta plant every year, for sure, like sweet basil. Look at that sweet basil, absolutely stunning. Great smell to it. So we've got sweet basil in stock. So you do have to plant that one every year, but there are other ones that will make it through our winters, like thyme. So we got a lot of different types of thyme. We got a lot of different types of oregano. There's lots and lots of oregano. This one is Italian oregano, but we've got sweet and spicy. Uh, we've got uh, the Greek oregano. And then of course, lavender, that's lavender grosso. We've got Hidcote, where there's lots and lots of different province lavender. There's lots and lots of different types of lavender as well. Then we've got mint. So this is mojito mint. This is a really, really cool mint. It's got a big leaf. It's great for drinks. Obviously the name uh, uh, says that with mojito mint, but it's great in desserts, uh, whether you're using them in tea or different types of drinks. This is a great option. Mint is awesome. A lot of people will grow this thing in a container because it can become pretty invasive, but if you want to grow it as a landscape ground cover, it's an awesome one. You can walk across it. You can't hurt the plant and you get that great aroma all the time. And then of course you can use it in all your cooking and your different uh, drinks and stuff. Rosemary, lots of different types of rosemary. This one's called barbecue rosemary. One of my favorites because it gets these long shoots on them. You can actually skewer meat with them um, and use them as cutting for fresh, uh, for fresh uh, herbs on your um, uh, whatever you might be cooking. So we've got rosemary, we've got flat leaf Italian parsley. We've also got the curly parsley. So you got lots and lots of parsley to choose from. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? I've got lemon balm. It's another really good one. We've got eucalyptus. So that's our little silver dollar eucalyptus. I know a lot of people are always looking for that. And don't forget about our feline friends, our furry friends, our cats. We've got cat grass as well. Look at that. I just love the look of that. I think cat grass is pretty just to look at, but their cats will help their diet out if you get them a little bit of cat grass. So it's another good option there. Herbs are three for 12. So you can get three of these for $12. It's a great way to kind of start your kitchen garden, whatever you might be growing. A lot of these are perennial, will come back every year. A lot of them you might have to replant each year, but basil gets huge every year. It's one of your favorites. You probably use it in a lot of your cooking. Um, and it's a great way to kind of get that herb or vegetable garden kind of feel started. You can start some of these indoor. Oh, there's also sage. I forgot to mention sage. There's a lot of other ones. I only grabbed a, a handful. There's different varieties in all of these, but they're three for 12 right now till the end of uh, uh, March 14th, till the end of our showcase. Um, so it's a great time, a great deal, and a huge collection just came in. So these are really, really great to kind of come in and pop in. A lot of them are evergreen, like lavender, rosemary, thyme, oregano. So you got a lot of choices that you can grow year round. So whether you're growing them in, in a container, in the landscape for an edible landscape, uh, or you're growing it inside your kitchen, you got lots and lots of different options here. So lots and lots of herbs. While I show you that, I got a couple other bigger ones. So here's a big rosemary. This one's called Blue Spires from Monrovia. Really, really pretty plant. Love rosemary fragrance, absolutely love it. This is a great one, great in the landscape. These are super, super drought tolerant plants. Lavender and rosemary, you know, think of Italy and that, that kind of clay, terracotta, you know, arid, dry area. Now we get a little bit more humidity in this area, so make sure it's got good airflow around it. But other than that, they're pretty hardcore plants and rosemary is one of my favorite. Most of them get somewhere in that 36 inch by 36 inch range. So three feet by three feet, really, really great shrub. It's evergreen um, and it gives that great fragrance and there's little light blue flowers uh, that come in the spring and in the fall as well. So bigger rosemary, I've got some bigger lavender as well. This one's called Primavera. And I grabbed this one because it's got all these little buds coming on it. 
So you know this thing's gonna be blooming real soon. So we've got some bigger lavender as well as some smaller ones to choose from. And then as I mentioned, eucalyptus, the silver dollar eucalyptus. I know a lot of you have been looking for this. We've got in some bigger ones. We got in the small ones right now as well. So if you're looking for eucalyptus, it's a great time to come in because sometimes these can be hard to find. We've got a good little collection of them right now. So silver dollar eucalyptus. This thing can get pretty big in the landscape. Really, really cool plant. All right, so let's move to the shade perennials. And before I do that, I wanna show one more thing, something different. I've always got my little tips and tricks and unique tools. And whenever I think about going out and starting my perennial garden or rehabbing it or, or getting it fresh for spring, I always think about the weeds. <laughs> I've always got you know some weeds encroaching. Right now you're gonna see weeds popping up in your landscape, um, in your lawn. We can help you take care of those. We've got lots and lots of different options for you. But this guy is called a weed slice. So look at that, I can get that real close to you. So this is basically a triangular blade right here. And what you can do with this is you can slice right through those root systems of those weeds and knock them out real quick. And this thing will save your back a ton. Uh, it's very, very easy to use. It's very fast, it's efficient. It's one of my favorites. Um, and so I've had this tool um, for a long, long time. It's a really, really awesome tool. They are $49.99, but they're on sale right now for $39.98. So if you need some help and you're like, oh, I've got to do this yard, I've got to do this area of my landscape, I've got to do this little perennial garden, I really want to do it, but I've got lots of weeds and I don't know what to do. This is a great way to tackle them fast and furious, and you can go and plant right then and there. So you can go and knock out your weeds, rake it up real quick with this weed slice, and then you're ready to roll and start planting for your spring garden. So whether it's uh, perennials or annuals or your vegetables or herbs, it's a great way to kind of work around shrubs. It works in rock as well. So it's a really, really cool one. I always like to throw out my tips and tricks there as I go along if I can. Um, let's see if we got any other questions. What perennial is good in full sun, but wet soil? So if you've got wet, full sun, uh, let's see, you could do uh, the society garlic would work. So that one would be a good option. You can actually do the creeping phlox will actually take it fairly well and the candy tuft too. Um, Dianthus prefers it a little bit more on the dry side and so does the pin cushion plant. Um, that juncus that I was showing you is a really, really nice one. I know it doesn't bloom, but it's a great one for wet soils and full sun. Really, really easy one to grow there. And we'll be getting in more and more. This is a small collection. You might look at like Creeping Jenny as a ground cover. That works really, really well in wet soils. Um, if you need a little bit of a taller plant, Bee Balm will do really well in full sun, but wet soils. Um, and we've got that coming in soon. Uh, let's see, what else could you do? I'm trying to think off the top of my head some options. Um, even some of the verbenas will do pretty well. Uh, so there's a couple different things. It's a little early yet for some of those, but we're going to be getting some in maybe even by the end of this next week uh, and more and more as the spring progresses. So if you're looking for specific things like that, we can help you throughout the season. Come in and check us out. We can show you some different options and talk about some different options. All right, let me talk about shade perennials. So shade perennials are one of my favorites. Not a huge collection in shade perennials, but um, for early spring, but they're awesome. I love them because most of them are evergreen. So that's one plus is most of them are evergreen, but there's lots and lots of different colors and varieties in each one. So let's start with the first one, which is hellebores. So hellebores, Linton Rose is another name for it. Huge collection of these right now. They're all 40% off. It's an amazing deal. A lot of people are getting into collecting these. They've got a really, really cool bloom on them. So this one is called uh, ice and roses. This is called the red. This is the ice and roses red. Really, really pretty plant. Nice tall spikes, that really deep burgundy color. And these are just super, super durable plants. So they are hardy in zones five to nine. They're deer and rabbit resistant. Um, they get about 12 to 24 inches tall. So they really range in height. This one's a little bit of a taller variety, probably in that 20 to 24 inch range height. Uh, but each year the clump gets bigger and bigger. These can spread 12 to 24 inches. Sometimes you might see them popping up in different places. They can spread by root, um, but typically they're going to stay in a nice full clump, super, super tolerant plant. Uh, very, very uh, tough and durable. You can kind of feel it in the leaf. Whenever you feel a leaf that's really kind of tough like this, 
Uh, you know it's going to last. They bloom right now from February all the way really into April. So they've got a long bloom time. They bloom when a lot of things aren't blooming. So they really can kind of start in February, really, um, and bloom all the way through April. Super, super easy, drought tolerant, can take a little bit of wet areas in uh, the shade, great around trees, um, deer resistant. So if you've got deer issues, this is a great one. Super, super awesome plant, and it's pretty much evergreen. Now in the summer months when we get really, really hot and humid and dry, uh, we don't have a lot of rain and especially planted around trees, you might see some burning on the leaves, but it kicks right back out of that in the fall, puts out new leaves. And then in the winter, if we get a really, really cold winter, you might see some damage as well. But other than that, they're pretty much evergreen and an awesome, awesome plant. So let me show you a couple different varieties. This one's called Ice and Roses Red. This is another really pretty one. This one is called Shooting Star. So that one's obviously a little bit of a shorter one, but it's a white bloom. So you can see that pure white bloom. And then it actually will fade to kind of a lime green color. Really cool. And even get some pink tones in there. So on one plant, you can have almost three to four different colors. The backs of the flowers, I don't know if you can see that, is like almost a maroon color. So I just love how gardeny and kind of cool looking these plants are. They're really, really collectible. They're awesome. Great texture uh, in the shade, so just a really, really tough, durable plant. Really, really good one. Another variety here. This one's really pretty. This one's called Ice and Roses White. So here's the Ice and Roses Red. This is the Ice and Roses White. So you can see that pure white bloom it really brightens up a shady area. Really, really tough plant. Love that. And lots and lots of colors as the flowers fade and continue to grow. You can pick these off so you can actually use them as cut flowers. They're great little cut flowers, but also as they start to fade um, and the petals start to fall off, you can go and take them out and kind of helps kind of keep the blooms going. Um, you'll see on, I think this next one here, maybe I'll have to show you another one. This one's called uh, Bacot, Bacot, Bacote. I think that's how, I, that's how I've always pronounced it. So kind of a marbly look. So it's got some raspberry white. So it's got kind of that raspberry red color with the white striping. You can see kind of that, that striping in there. Really pretty flowers. These are great in containers as well. So up on a patio or porch, they work great. They're gorgeous in the garden. Uh, they're great in clumps. So you can grow these as masses. You can have a collection of them throughout your shade garden. Awesome, awesome plants. So hellebores are a must if you're doing shade gardening, especially in the perennial world. I love them. And I wanted to show you this one back here again because I can just show you that here is a flower spike. This is another one coming right here, a big one that's just opening up, starting to set all these buds. And then I've got another one here popping up and another one coming from down here. So just in here, I've got, I've got one full flower spike. I've got another one coming and another two that are a little bit further behind. So this guy's going to continue to pump out blooms for the next month to two months. Awesome, awesome perennials. Really, really cool uh, plant. The next one is, and all the hellebores are 40% off right now. So if you want to extend your collection or you want to try one for the first time, come in now. Great deal, 40% off. Heucras. So coral bells or heucras are the next one I want to show you. Huge collection of these. So I absolutely love these. Let's see if I can find a really pretty one here. I've, well, they're all pretty. Uh, but this one is called Shanghai Coral Bells. So coral bells is what some people might call them. Heucra, heucarella. There's a lot, a lot of different names for them. They get these little kind of kind of foamy flowers that come out of the top, real kind of dainty. Um, but these are awesome. They are hardy in zones four through nine. They're pretty deer and rabbit resistant. Sometimes you'll see them come through and nibble on them a little bit. Um, it depends again on how many deer you have. If you've got a huge deer population, they might eat them up. If you have a couple wandering deer that wander through every once in a while, not as bad. Uh, but heucra come in a ton of different colors. So this one is called Shanghai. Really pretty kind of marbly purple color. Let's see, I've also got, this one is called uh, Fire Chief. So kind of that brighter red. I'm gonna just show you all these. All of these get right around in that eight to 12 inch height by about 12 to 24 inches wide, depending on the variety. This one is called, let's see, uh, Forever Red Heucra. A great one from Monrovia. Really pretty, kind of that autumn color. And these are just so much fun to collect and grow in the shade. I absolutely love them. This one's another Forever Red, just a different grower. But you can see that coloration in there. Let's see, what else we got? 
This one's really pretty. This one is called Southern Comfort. So you can see kind of that lime green. I love the fact that on the undersides of the leaves, they actually have different colors. So you can see that kind of that kind of orangey autumn kind of uh, different color. And then you've got underneath, you've got more of that maroon kind of pink color. So the stems have color. They get little dainty flowers. Some people don't even like the flowers. You can pick them off if you don't like them. They're real easy to just kind of pop off if you, if you don't want them for the flowers, but they're really grown for the foliage. They're pretty evergreen as well. So these will last all the way, um, all, all year round basically. And again, extreme heat summers, you might see a little crisping on the leaves, same in the extreme cold winter parts. Uh, but other than that, they're absolutely gorgeous. Great in containers. I love them as a filler. Um, they look great with hellebores, uh, ferns. I'm gonna show you here in a minute, but there's lots and lots of different colors and textures. I've got some big ones here I'm going to show you in just a second too. This one is called Fire Alarm. Look at that color in there. Just so many different colors. You can see all the buds shooting out. So you can see all these new shoots of, of flowers that are going to come spiking out of the top. Really, really pretty. Most of them have a pink to white bloom color. Um, they're actually pretty good pollen plants for your pollinators. So if you're looking for some pollen uh, excitement or some uh, so to help out your pollinators, but you got a lot of shade, heuchras or coral bells are a great option. This one's called Fire Alarm. Let's see, now I've got some big ones here that I'm gonna pull out. This is where I get really excited when I start to see these big ones. Uh, I think I might have grabbed one that doesn't have a tag, so I don't know if I know this variety. Oh, oh, there we go. This one's called Berry Smoothie. So you can see all that variegation in the leaves. It's really, really cool. So you get all this striping, lots and lots of different colors. And I just love that leaf texture. Really, really fun in the shade garden. So look how big that guy is. And this is just going to get bigger and bigger each year as it grows. Really awesome one. And then I've got this dark burgundy color. Let's see, this one is called Black, Black Tafita. So really, really different color, but really dark burgundy color. Awesome, awesome in, in the shade garden. Again, great for containers. I just love all the different looks. I want them all. I want to collect them all. And then this last one will show you even more of the coloration that these get. Look at that lime green color. This one is called Delta Dawn. So Delta Dawn, it's got a little bit of that kind of orange burgundy color on the inside, on the veins. But other than that, it's kind of that lime green chartreuse color. You can see those flower spikes that are coming out of the top of this one. Really, really pretty color. That'll brighten up a shady spot for sure. And these are great. And all of our heuchras are 30% off right now. So these are absolutely awesome. Huge collection right now. One of my favorite perennials, heuchras. Lots and lots of choices. Now there's another one that you might not know as well. This one's called Tiarella. So it's actually not a heuchra. It's actually a lot of people call them foam flowers. Um, but it's a slightly different leaf. And really what the biggest difference in the leaf is, is it's a little bit more dissected. So it's got a little bit more of lobes, of these deeper lobes cut into it. So almost more of like a maple leaf look to it. But really, really different. Tons and tons of flowers on these. So they come out of the top. They'll be spiking up all over the place. And this one up close, you can see some burgundy veins. It's kind of got this autumn kind of orangey color in there as well. But Tiarella also grows in the shade very, very well. Um, these can actually take pretty moist, shady conditions to fairly dry conditions as well. Uh, you don't want to get them too, too dry. So in extreme drought periods, you might want to give them a little bit of water. But otherwise, heuchras, tiarella are awesome, awesome shade plants. Lots and lots of choices too to choose from. And we've got a huge collection right now. It's a great time to come in. Heuchras are 30% off. All right, let's check and see if there's any questions. Is hellebores a good uh, perennial for a planter? For sure, I love them in containers. I think they're great uh, in a small container. While I mention that, let me also mention that our containers are on sale. So this right here is the Pantone color of the year, this bright yellow, it's awesome. Um, and all of our glazed outdoor pottery is 30% off. Let me make sure I got that right. I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, yep, all of them are 30% off, huge new collection. Absolutely stunning. All the different choices from blues to gray to white to yellow, orange, multi-striped colors, lots and lots of different textures. This one's got kind of this ribbed texture. I've seen some that have like a bamboo texture, shells, lots and lots of choices in our glazed outdoor pottery. They're all 30% off. Hellebores will go great in a container. Look at that. Very, very easy to grow this 
um, in a container, and each year they'll come back and be perfectly gorgeous. Actually, they don't really ever go away. They're kind of almost always there. Let me show you this pot as well. See if I can pick this up. Look at that really pretty gray color. So if you're looking for a neutral color and let the plants do the talking, then this would be a good option. If you're looking for a bright color container, we've got yellows and blues and greens and lots and lots of different colors and textures. So all of our outdoor glazed pottery is 30% off right now through March 5th, uh, 14th. So come in and check us out, get those deals. All right, next I wanna talk about ferns. Ferns are a really good one. Of course, if you are uh, native, if you live in the area, there's lots of native ferns. So we know they're deer and rabbit resistant. We know the zones are gonna work pretty well. Most of your fern zones are six to nine, six to 10, somewhere in that range. There's lots and lots of different types of ferns that give you different texture and color. This one is called a tassel fern. So it's got this kind of fuzzy little texture to it. Really pretty, I just love ferns. They just remind me of a garden. Uh, they're easy to grow. Tassel ferns pretty evergreen as well. And that's why I also love ferns is because they're pretty much evergreen. So you always have them. This one is a new one. I haven't seen this one here in a while. This one's called a, I think a tongue, uh, heart's tongue fern. So you can see that almost looks like a bird nest, a bird's nest fern from your, from your tropical fern collection that we grow as an indoor plant. But this one's called heart's fern tongue. So heart's tongue fern, really, really different. Very kind of glossy leaf, almost reminds me of the Oh, uh, no, I'm not going to think of the name, but there's another evergreen fern that has that kind of glossy look, a little bit more dissected leaf, but this one's kind of a long, strappy leaf, really cool looking fern. I just love perennial ferns. They're so much fun. You can see down in here all these little new shoots coming up out of the ground. So we've got all these little new shoots coming up in here. Love seeing those unfurl. Really, really good, easy plants to grow. This one's heart's tongue fern. Really, really nice one. And then, of course, the tried and true autumn fern. Love the autumn brilliance fern. This one, I, a lot of them don't have color on them right now because all of these new little ferns are starting to unfurl inside. So when these new fronds come out, they're gonna be this autumn co color, kind of this corally, uh, peachy kind of color. Kind of uh, the best way to describe it is autumn. It just reminds me of autumn, but it's awesome. These are evergreen ferns. This one gets about 18 to 24 inches tall and wide, so a pretty good sized fern. Uh, whereas the tassel fern is a little bit smaller. The heart's tongue is about the same size, 12 to 24 inches. Sometimes we'll get the ostrich fern, which is a much bigger fern. Uh, so you got lots and lots of choices for ferns. Of course, we carry tons of ferns in our house plant, our tropical collection, but this one is a perennial and comes back year after year. Deer and insect resistance, not a lot of issues, evergreen, great in containers, great in the shade garden. So here with ferns, heucras, and, or sorry, hellebores, Lenten rose, and heucras, you've got great texture in the shade, um, and they all are basically either evergreen or semi-evergreen, um, and are gonna just be awesome in the shade perennial garden year after year and just get bigger and better over the time. And of course, hostas will be in soon, so you can throw hostas in there. That's why I love shade gardening. While there's not a huge amount of different types of plants, there's a lot and lots of different colors within those plants. With your hellebores, you get lots of different bloom colors. Heucras give you texture and leaf color. And then ferns give you that movement um, and that cool kind of sense of feeling. And then of course, hostas with all their different variation. Now there's a couple other ones that I wanna show you. Oh, look, I missed a uh, heucra. This one is called Berry Timeless. So a little bit more on that kind of silver tone with those dark kind of green veins with these little pink flowers that are coming out of the top. Missed a couple. I'm gonna miss some, I'm sure. This one is called a chorus. So a chorus ogon, one of my new favorites. I absolutely love this plant. I use it all the time in uh, uh, container gardens. So if I'm planting annual containers, it's a great thriller. It's got that great kind of uh, upright habit, but also has a little bit of that trailing habit as well. Really soft grass. This one can grow in a bog type of condition as well. This one is called a chorus ogon. Hardy in zones four to nine, deer and rabbit resistant, but I love this one in the shade. It can take pretty good sun. So if you've got full sun and it's a slightly wet area, like I think somebody mentioned earlier, um, this might be a good option for you. Uh, a lot of people know it as sweet flag as well, but it is awesome in the shade. It gets a little bit more of that chartreuse lime green color in the shade and is absolutely stunning and brights up, brightens up a shady area. The clump gets bigger and bigger each year. 
Um, it's pretty evergreen as well. So it really doesn't, again, in extreme cold winters, might get a little crispy on the edges. Really, really hot summers, maybe the same thing, but in a wet kind of area, a shady area, they're gonna do awesome. I love this plant, just love that texture. Look at it up against all of this green, it just shines. So another really, really good grass for the shade. It's not a really true grass, but has that grassy kind of feel to it. So really, really cool. A chorus ogon, one of my new favorite plants. It's awesome. All right, let's see what else do I have in my collection here. Make sure I got the mondo grass. Mondo grass is another great shade perennial. This is black mondo, so you can probably barely even see it, but this is a really cool mondo grass. Really, really dark color. Of course, there's green mondo grass, there's dwarf mondo grass, there is the regular mondo grass that's green, and then there's the black mondo grass. Just a really cool texture. Again, great in, sh in uh, container gardens, but um, also great um, in the landscape, um, in a shady area. Really, really cool texture, and it'll spread and kind of become a ground cover over the years. Uh, really, really awesome when it gets little flower spikes as well um, in the summer time frame. So mondo grass is another good one, and we're gonna be getting in more and more perennials as we go on. The collection is almost endless. Uh, let me stop here and tell you about a couple other things, which is statuary. We've got, I always think of statuary for some reason when I'm talking about perennial gardens, especially in the shade. You know, I've got the Zen frog right here, really cool. We've got a slightly bigger one over here. You can see his head poking out. Uh, but these just add a lot of value to the garden. Concrete statuary gets better with age, so it actually gets stronger. So when you first pick them up and you're handling them, be careful with them. But once you set them in your landscape or in your garden area, then you can just let them be and they actually get better and stronger with age. I love statuary. These are our Zen frogs. They're really, really cool. Lots of fun. All of our statuary is 25% off. We also have a great bunny collection right now. So I love bunnies. There's a huge collection of statuary. There's lots and lots of different things. Owls and dragons, um, down to simple, just kind of architectural pieces. But bunnies are awesome for the landscape. We've got dogs and cats as well. The Zen frog. So whether you're doing an Asian inspired Zen kind of garden or whether you're doing a fun kind of perennial garden, we've got lots and lots of choices for you. This bunny is kind of laying on his back. And then I love this one over here. Let me see if I can grab this. Because I know it's just barely off your screen, so you probably can't quite see it. Let me see if I can grab this without knocking too much over. So this one is a pair of bunnies laying together, but it's in a heart shape. <laughs> so it's really, really cool. This one is called uh, Love and Devotion Bunnies. So again, 25% off statuary. There's lots and lots of designs. So come in and check out our huge statuary collection. Fountains are also 25% off. I might talk about those a little bit more when we get into the shrub area and talk about shrubs on Wednesday. Uh, but there's lots and lots of choices. Uh, last but not least, I want to talk about uh, the other options or the other ways to get perennials in your garden. So seeds are one. So there's lots and lots of seeds. I think a lot of us think of seeds and say uh, that's mostly annuals. So we're thinking like pansies or uh, you know, different types of, of annual flowers um, that you can grow from seed, but there's a lot of perennials. Now this is milkweed. I brought that because it's a very, very popular one. We've got swamp milkweed, common milkweed. We've got a wildflower perennial collection that you can kind of scatter seeds. Uh, there's Rudbeckia goldstrom, which is a great perennial. There's cone flowers. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of perennials in your seeds. So if you're looking to kind of do things from seeds or get a little bit of a jump on the game, maybe you have a plan for something uh, and you want to try and do them from seeds, great option for you. They're very inexpensive. You get lots and lots of seeds. So let's see, like this one is, sometimes they'll tell you how many seeds are in a packet. Uh, let's see, this one's got 40 seeds. So we got 40 seeds in this swamp milkweed. So you can get lots and lots of swamp milkweed very, very efficiently and easily. Just make sure your temperature's right, ask us questions, we can help you grow seeds. They're very easy to start indoors, move outside, or direct sow when the temperature gets right in the soil. And you can always ask us questions. Seeds are a great option. We also got our bulbs are here. So we've got all of our bulbs. They just came in, they're all 20% off right now. So like this is a Noreen lily, so that spider lily look. Uh, these are all perennials, hostas. We've got hostas. We've got liatris. Let's see, I've grabbed a couple other ones that are really fun to talk about. I've got the red hot pokers. So these are all perennial bulbs. They're all 20% off. 
This is Crocus Mia. There's 18 of these in here. And there's Cannas. So if you're looking for that summer kind of perennial color, Cannas are real popular. There's four Cannas in here. So these are great deals, great value. Bulbs are awesome, easy to do. You just gotta kinda have to plan ahead. So I know a lot of us, you know, we start to see the daffodils and the tulips pop up right now. Oh, I wanna go to the garden center and get them. And we do have some, so we've got some potted up already. But think about it next fall, because that's when you plant your tulips and daffodils, but, and hyacinths and things like that. But right now is when you're gonna plant your summer blooming bulbs. So if you're looking for red hot pokers or hostas or crocus mia, these are some great perennials, cannas. There's lots and lots of options. And they're all 20% off, except for this guy is awesome. So this is an elephant ear. These are giant elephant ear bulbs. Look how big these guys are. You get three of these in a pack. They're normally $29.99. They're on sale for $19.98. So this is a great deal as well. These are the calicacia, the elephant ears, and these are giant ones, and these are perennials. So you can plant these in the ground. You don't have to dig them up. You don't have to do anything. They'll come back year after year, get bigger and better. So again, a great one if you've got a shade. They actually grow pretty well in a little bit of sun too, but for a shade garden, they're awesome in this area. Um, elephant ear bulbs. So you can get perennials lots and lots of different ways. And there's so many good deals going on right now. I can't stop myself. You know, of course you got to get out there and get in the garden. So you might need a new pair of gloves. They're 30% off. There's so many deals right now. Fire pits, rain barrels, uh, patio furniture. There's the list goes on and on. Statuary fountains, glazed pottery. There's so many different choices right now. Our spring showcase is going on until the 14th. Let's see if we've got any other questions. Um, is it too early to plant coral bells? Definitely not. You can plant coral bells pretty much year round. We pretty much carry them year round because it's one of our favorite plants. They're very easy to grow and they're pretty much evergreen in this area. So you really can plant as long as the ground isn't frozen, you can plant them. Spring is one of the best times because you're gonna get the biggest selection probably. So I'd come check those out. Plus 30% off is a really, really good deal. I'm definitely gonna be adding to my collection pretty soon on those. Um, what is a good perennial to put around a tree that is sun on one side or shade on the other side? Um, so you probably, in, in that kind of scenario where you've got kind of a really sunny portion around a tree, you wouldn't want to probably do a ring of one type of plant. Now there are some plants that can take multiple different types of sun and shade. But what I would look at doing is groupings and clusters. So I would probably look at on the sunny side, maybe doing some candy tuff or phlox right now, maybe coming back and getting some cone flowers or rubecchia in the future as we start to warm up and get a little bit more, but doing them in groupings and clusters. So like threes and fives of things and kind of arrange them so you get kind of a perennial garden look around that tree. And on the sunny side, you can do more of the sun tolerant plants. And on the shady side, you can put ferns and hellebores and heucheras and hostas. Uh, lots and lots of good choices for that entirety around. Um, so those would be kind of some of my good options there uh, to kind of help you kind of plan that out. And as I always say with perennials, come and check us out throughout the year because you're going to see different things. I'm going to forget some of the ones that you can plant as great perennials. I mean, like mums, I never think of mums until we get them in the fall. Great perennial. Uh, there's lots and lots of choices. So we are going to get perennials, most of them, as they bloom throughout the season. So, you know, I, I think of, uh, what is it? Uh, now I'm not going to be able to think of it. Um, ver uh, verbena, homestead verbena is another good one. We're not going to get that for maybe a week or two. Uh, as it starts to warm up, we'll get them. Um, there's a couple other ones that I'm probably are slipping my mind. But there's a ton of them out there, and that's the thing is, even it's hard for me to remember them all. But definitely check us out throughout the season. That'll help, I think, as you're looking for different bloom periods, but also different plants. Um, let's see, I think I got that one. Do perennial outdoor ferns go dormant in the winter or are they evergreen around here? A lot of them are evergreen. So the autumn fern that I was showing you earlier, that one is evergreen. In extreme cold winters, you might see them get a little crispy. Um, I was thinking of the other one, the holly fern. So the holly fern, the Rockford fern, uh, that one uh, is evergreen as well. There's some, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting the name now, uh, but the Chinese, I, I think, fern, it's got a variegation to it. It's almost kind of like a tiger looking fern. Um, that one actually will go dormant. Ostrich ferns go dormant, but the Autumn Brilliance Fern is evergreen. The Holly Fern is evergreen. The Tassel Fern is evergreen. So there's lots and lots of choices. 
for your evergreen ferns in this area. And it, again, in the extremely hot summers, you might see a little bit of burning on them, but you clip them off in the fall, they'll put out, as we start to cool down and get closer to fall, they'll put out new fronds. And then in the, in the winter, you might get a little crispiness here and there. That kind of is the same for hellebores, heuchras, ferns. They all can kind of go through dianthus. They're all pretty much evergreen. Candy tough, they're all pretty evergreen. And during different times of the year, you might see uh, some issues, some burning, whether it's too hot or too cold, but they kick right back out of it. And so I, I consider that evergreen to semi-evergreen, meaning extreme temperatures might cause a little bit of, of, of leaf damage, but that's okay. They're used to it. They're going to kick right out of it. Sometimes I've seen them go completely dormant. Uh, when we've had extremely cold winters, you might see them go completely dormant and then they'll come right back from the root system. But pretty much most of the ferns are evergreen in this area. The lime green grass. So this is, so Deborah asked, spell it. So this is um, uh, Ogon Acorus. Acorus is A-C-O-R-U-S. Sorry, I'm a horrible speller. I got to look at the tag. Acorus, A-C-O-R-U-S. Ogon is O-G-O-N. So Acorus Ogon, one of my favorite, favorite plants. Uh, let's see, uh, Jody said waiting to hear about hydrangeas. Well, hydrangeas I'll try and talk about in my shrub webinar on Wednesday. I consider that a shrub. A lot of people, that's where I think a little bit of confusion comes into perennials and shrubs because shrubs can be kind of perennials because uh, they'll go dormant. So hydrangeas go dormant. But because the twigs are still there and it's going to grow back from that uh, growth above ground, we consider that a shrub. Whereas perennials, if they die or go dormant, I shouldn't say die, but if they go dormant in the winter, they usually go dormant down to the root system and come back from the root system. Whereas like hydrangeas or Rose of Sharon, um, let's see, there's lots and lots of other deciduous shrubs out there. Um, you know, a lot of your viburnums are going to be deciduous. Uh, Forsythia is a great example. So it's going to leaf back out from those stems that are above ground. And so therefore, uh, we consider that a shrub because it's always there. You can cut them back fairly hard, but you wouldn't typically do that. Like for forsythia, you wouldn't cut it back in the winter. And you, could, you could cut it back down to the ground almost, um, especially if it's been established and been in the ground for a long time. But you're not going to get any blooms. And it's going to put the uh, stunt on the plant for a while and kind of put it into a state of shock. Whereas perennials, so like let's say a perennial hibiscus, that is not going to come back from any of the top growth. So you can cut that down to the ground and it's going to come back from the rootstock. And then that's how we kind of classify perennials and shrubs. So hydrangeas are gorgeous. We're getting in more and more. Um, I will talk about them. I've done webinars before. So if you are interested in going back into the history of all of our webinars, you go to our website, scroll down a little bit, you'll see our webinar icon. And in there, you can go through all of the webinars. I did one specifically on hydrangeas where I talked about all the different varieties. Our biggest collection of hydrangeas usually comes around Mother's Day. It's a great gift, but also that's the perfect time of the year that hydrangeas are starting to bloom and you're going to get the biggest collection when plants are blooming. So check us back in Mother's Day time frame. I'll try and mention some. I think we got in a couple, so maybe I'll bring in some when I talk about my uh, spring shrubs. Um, even though they're dormant right now, they're going to be kicking out new leaves here pretty soon and blooming in no time. Spring is on its way. Summer's coming up. Um, so lots and lots of hydrangeas for sure, uh, but I, I probably won't talk about them too specifically, but if you want a lot of information on hydrangeas, check out my webinars uh, from the past. Uh, everybody's saying thanks. I think I've got uh, pretty good answers. So Jody said, waiting to hear about hydrangeas. I have a huge container. So yeah, if you've got a big container, hydrangeas make good container plants. You might consider Japanese maples. I will be talking about those on Wednesday for sure. Japanese maples are one of my favorites. Um, and there's lots of other choices for a container. Whether you want evergreen, is it sun or shade? A, a hydrangea in a container, you're most likely going to want to grow in the shade, Jody. So think about that. Um, let's see. Can't wait for the Zoysia lawn class. Great June. I will see you on Monday night. It's at 6 p.m. So if you're working, then you should be able to be able to tune in live and you can ask me all the questions that you want. I'll probably do that one a little bit closer to the computer so that I can see you and kind of talk to you and answer questions as I go along. Uh, but I'll have lots and lots of things to be able to show you uh, throughout that and talk to you about how to establish a great lawn. You're not going to be doing a whole lot right now. It's a little bit of planning and prepping uh, to get ready for the lawn season. The Zoysia plugs and uh, St. Augustine plugs will be in 
typically depends on the weather. Mid to end of April is when our first shipment will come in. They're great size plugs. So tune in on Monday night at 6 p.m. Uh, where you can watch that live. You can always watch any of our webinars, uh, as I mentioned, on our website if you missed it. Uh, these webinars, because they're specific about sales and a lot of the deals that we got going on, uh, these probably won't, will be kept live for a little while, but then eventually, uh, or keep on our website or our Facebook page for a little while, but then eventually we'll take it down and we'll be doing webinars throughout the entire season. We started these last year, of course, due to COVID, um, but we have loved them. Our customers love them. It's a great way to connect. Uh, we love doing classes and education and any of these seminars and webinars are a great way for us to connect to our customers and we're going to continue to do them. So we're very, very excited to continue to do them. We'll have a whole new slate of webinars coming up for the spring season. Uh, a lot of them will be interactive. We'll actually be planting up containers uh, or doing succulent gardens or terrariums or talking about vegetables or herbs. The list goes on and on. There's a ton of old ones that we've done and there's new ones coming up as soon as we get through our showcase where I'm going to be talking about a lot of great deals. So tune in on Monday night uh, for the lawn class and also Wednesday for shrubs, for some of my favorite shrubs, maybe some trees thrown in there for sure. And then on Friday, we'll be talking about trending houseplants. There's so many people out there collecting houseplants. I love them. My collection's growing every day. It seems like every day I'm bringing home something different. Um, so check out all of our great webinars. Come in and see us for this showcase, for our spring showcase. It's going on now all the way until March 14th. Great deals. and. Um, so Ruth, I'll mention our garden markets, they are opening soon. Uh, so check out our website for all the garden markets that are opening up in your neck of the woods. Um, if you've shopped there before and you're a Garden Rewards member, you should be receiving an email fairly soon about when it's opening. Uh, but they're all getting built right now. We're going to start getting some product in there and we're going to start opening them up soon. So within the next couple weeks, two to three weeks, we should have most of them open. Uh, so if we're in, in your neck of the woods, you can check us out there. But of course, this is worth a trip coming to our Independence location or our Great Neck location where there's years and years of experience. All of this knowledge that I have, um, which I don't think is that much, um, uh, comes from all of our amazing employees. They are absolutely amazing. I learn so much from them every day. I love this field because I'll never know it all. So uh, it's great to learn something new every single day that I come into work, whether it's from a fellow employee or whether it's from you asking me a question that I don't know. I love it because I can go investigate and get back to you. And so thank you for joining. I hope everybody has a great day. Let me just check one more time. Did you say that one behind you is the tall tree of yellow flowers? This is a, an annual. So I've got these pansy hanging baskets here. I wanted to bring these in just for some bright color. Uh, this is considered an annual. All of our pansies are 40% off though. And these are absolutely stunning pansy hanging baskets. This is a bush daisy and bush daisies are an annual in this area. They're 30% off right now, but it's a great patio tree. They bloom amazingly from now until probably the mid-May to end of May time frame. They'll take a little bit of a breather in the summer when it gets hot. If you move it into a little bit of a shady location, you can continue to get blooms. But then again in the fall, it erupts with blooms again. And a lot of people will bring these patio trees into their garage during the winter months and get them through the winter and then take them back out during the spring. So you can keep this thing going if you want to, or you can just grow it as a spring and fall annual. It's absolutely stunning, very easy to grow drought tolerant, so great in containers, but also awesome in the landscape as an annual plant. Huge, huge collection. We've got these patio trees. We've also got them in pots uh, from a one gallon up to a three gallon. We've got a huge collection. Bush daisies are one of our favorites uh, for an early spring splash of color. You know, like I said, they'll bloom for the next two to three months. Take a little bit of a breather in the summer and then kick back again in the fall. Awesome, awesome plant. All right, let's see everybody. All right, I think I've got everybody's questions. I'll go back through and make sure I didn't miss any, um, but I hope you all enjoyed this webinar. Have a great day, come in and see us. We're excited. There's tons and tons of plants here, new products, new ideas. Our decor is gorgeous. We've got indoor and outdoor decor. Our house plant collection is huge. We've got annuals, perennials, shrubs. You know, we've got a great collection of encore azaleas, uh, Japanese maples, and uh, spring blooming camellias. They're all on sale from different varying prices from 30 to 40% off, I believe. So some great deals. It's a great time to come in and get some deals, but also to come in and get some knowledge um, and start to plan and prepare for your spring season. I hope everybody has a great day. I will see you Monday night if you tune in for our lawn class about St. Augustine and Zoysia. And if not, maybe I'll see you Wednesday or Friday when we talk about shrubs and then on Friday houseplants. So I hope you all have a great week. 
the weather is warming up. I'm super, super excited to uh, start to get out in the yard and do some uh, landscaping and some working in my yard and my garden and getting everything ready for the spring season. It's coming. I hope you all enjoy this. I hope to see you soon. I'll be around. So if you see me, ask me some questions if you got any or just say hello. And I hope to see you all in the future. Get ready for this amazing spring season. Have a great day, everybody. Come join us for our spring showcase. Bye.